check out these dovetails. So we've previously marked out the spacing between. Now we want to mark out these lines, come back to our drawing, these lines into here, which is the angles of our dovetails back into the depth that we're going to cut it. So I've already knifed this line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run from that line that we've created up there back to this line here. So if I drop my pencil in there, that should, in the marking gauge line, that will just follow that line so I can see it. I, I've been able to see that line the whole time. Oh good, well I couldn't see it from up here. Now that angle that I cut there, or that I marked there, is a 1 is to 6. Now what 1 is to 6 means is, so if we look at that, these, um, these dovetail squares, or dovetail markers, which I made, uh, are as 1 is to 6, so I've just stamped a 6 on that. I'll probably make some more of these and put them up in the store. Uh, but 1 is to 6 is my favourite angle. And what 1 is to 6 refers to is, if I run an axis line there, if I space out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equal spaces, that same space running back on the y-axis, if we like here, then that line through there is 1 is to 6. So that's our angle. And it's about 10 degrees. But that seems to be about a good balancing point where I cut most of my dovetails. Sometimes I'll go more, sometimes I'll go less, but most of the times I'll go one to six. All right, so I'm just running back and forth off my lines here that are marked on the end of the side to mark out where I'm gonna cut these tails. All right, and I'm always gonna mark the waist area. So I'm gonna cut that away and be left with the tail. And you always mark both sides, right? No, I only mark one side. Really? Mm. Why? Because um, when we cut with a saw, that saw will cut straight and we're only watching one side of the line. So we won't be able to bend the saw. So I just think it's pointless marking the other side. I mark the other side. Hmm. Oh, okay. So if you, <laughs> didn't have, if you didn't have a dovetail square, the alternative is to set up a sliding bevel um, and this is our chinois sliding bevel. And I'm just setting that to that one is to six angle. So in this case, I'll just set it off that existing angle there, uh, or I can mark it out off my axis and mark that angle out from there. And then it's the same thing. It's just a matter of running our lines back and forward, either inside or outside, it doesn't matter. And we can run it out with the sliding bevel. The only thing I don't like about using a sliding bevel is it's, it's big. You know, clunky. So, so this is nice and small uh, and manageable, and I can it'll double up as a square running back the other way. So I can use it as a square on that cut there.